So the graph has been called the Google of blockchain, and that's quite a big name to live up to. And since their token has launched, it's been listed on exchanges like Coinbase and other major ones so quickly, which is also impressive. In this video, I'm going to go deep into this project, share what they're all about, cover their GRT token and its tokenomics, and much more. So if you're already invested in this project or you've had your eye on it for a while, then this video is for you. Just sit back, relax, and just keep on watching. Welcome back to Bitcoin for Beginners. I'm your host, Kevin. And in this channel, we provide deep research with honest opinions and no frills nor fluffs. As always, I'll leave timestamps down below if you want to skip ahead to any section. And while you're watching this video, if you like what you see, then just please give me a quick like and that helped me out immensely. OK, so what is the graph, right? Essentially, it's a query layer for Web3, and that's just a fancy name for the decentralized version of the Internet. Essentially, what they want to do is to help people search for vast amounts of blockchain data efficiently and in a decentralized manner. So, for example, some queries you can run are what are the latest DeFi projects? Which decentralized exchanges have the most liquidity? Which governance protocols have the most representatives? Right. Those are just examples to kind of get in your head what type of blockchain data you could query using the graph because retrieving data from storage is really hard to do efficiently. You need to filter the data, sort it, group it, and do much more with it. Currently, what teams do in the DeFi space is create their own indexes and servers, which means they gather data from Ethereum that they'll need for their DAP, they store it centrally, and then they create an API to fetch the data. Graph Protocol does this, but in a decentralized manner. So before we go further, why is this important, right? You can think about the internet as having a stack, and you can see that in this picture above. And the Web3 version of the internet also has a stack. DApps are decentralized on the blockchain layer, which is awesome, but the rest of the stack is run by centralized businesses, which makes it prone to arbitrary failures, unilateral power from the service provider, and rent-seeking. Blockchain data is rarely stored in a way that can be easily consumed by these DApps. Teams currently do this by themselves, but if they quit, if they maliciously change the data, if they make mistakes, then eventually this is no better than the centralized approach, right? So the graph aims to solve this problem and also make the experience better or at least equal to the centralized options. So how does this all work, right? Well, the core of the graph protocol is something called the subgraph. And essentially what that is, is data from the blockchain to be stored in a particular manner and indexed. So this whole theme that the graph is building is a decentralized system and incentives are put into place with the token GRT. Now, the developers for a particular dApp can put a subgraph of the data that they want to interact with often onto the Ethereum registry and stake GRT to tell indexers, hey, I want you to index this so I can get the latest up to date data in this area easily and efficiently. And end users will interact with something called a query engine, which either sits in their browser as an extension or within a dApp itself. And essentially what this lets them do is the query data without needing to compute it or store it by themselves. Indexers run a graph node and also an agent that decides what prices to set and which subgraphs to index. And finally, curators and delegators use the graph explorer which is already live, by the way, and will be a dApp in and of itself. So I kind of already touched on a few of these, but there are six types of roles in the ecosystem. First, you have the indexers that run nodes, and what they do is store data, provide data, and get rewarded. Curators also use GRT to signal which subgraphs are valuable to index, and this could potentially be developers who curate or end users as well. Delegators stake GRT on behalf of indexers and earn a cut of the fees, so you can do this if you don't want to run the nodes yourselves. Consumers can be end users and they pay the indexers for queries. These can be the actual end users or some site or service that's integrated with the graph protocol. There's also fishermen and arbitrator, and these are a little bit more obscure and complex, but essentially they handle disputes in the verification layer. Now, a little bit more about the query process, because at the end of the day, this is a service to query data from the blockchain in an efficient manner. So how does that query process work? And you can think of it like an API. There's a query market where there's a network of indexers. They're all competing to provide the best service at the best price. 
And the process goes as follows. Step one, consumers ask which indexers have the data they want. They ask this from the graphs service. Out of those indexers, they ask them about their prices. Then they select one indexer. And then step four is they send a query and a conditional micropayment, which is how much they're willing to pay. And number five, last but not least, the indexers send back the data response and also an attestation, which then unlocks the conditional micropayment and gets them paid. So what is this GRT used for? It's a native utility token and it has two primary use cases. First, the indexers have to stake this to be discoverable. And second, curators stake this and can be rewarded for predicting which subgraphs are valuable. Consumers are encouraged to hold either ETH or some other stable coin, but payment is ultimately settled in GRT as the common unit of account. GRT also incentivizes behavior in and around the network, such as indexing new subgraphs that haven't been so far. Also, you can think about it. If there's more demand from dApps for this graph service, then there's more reasons for other people to participate and then more buyers of GRT, which can potentially lead to price appreciation. And on the note of price appreciation and earning interest and yield, just a quick shout out to our sponsors, Matrixport. I've given them a shout out in previous videos before, and we've gotten over 20 signups so far. Their $5 cashback offer is still being offered just by any one of their products and take a screenshot, send it to them, and they'll give you $5 cash back. And I also want to highlight their dual currency product. You can get a high interest in this. Essentially, you just choose a linked price. So if BTC is lower than that linked price at expiry, you get more BTC than you deposited. And if it's higher than that linked price, then you get more USDC than that linked price. So I know that may be a little bit hard to wrap your head around, but if you're curious about this, go download the Matrixport app on both the Google Play Store and Apple App Store, and then sign up using my link down below. Click on their dual currency product and you can learn more there. So what about the GRT tokenomics, right? They had a 10 billion initial token supply and they're issuing 3% every year for indexing rewards. They're also burning GRT though, and they're burning the deposit tax for curators and delegators, around 1% of the query fees and also unclaimed rebate rewards. The max supply will be the 10 billion minted plus new issuance minus the burned amount. And they're also going to set up something called the graph council eventually, which is going to go towards a community governed DAO type approach. So what are some notable features in the graph protocol? First, the query market, we already covered this. The graph explorer that you can try out on their website, it lets you view and explore the available data. There's also the graph name service, which provides human readable names for subgraphs, curator rewards, which you can get a portion of the query fees. So you should deposit GRT to the subgraphs you think are gonna be most in demand. Indexers also get rewarded for indexing new subgraphs. And there's also a process called proof of indexing that prevents indexers from collecting rewards falsely and conditional micropayments, which are basically payment locks to minimize trust between consumers and indexers to make sure that they pass along payments and the information requested properly. So what have they accomplished so far? They've been working on this since late 2017, and they've already been used by big name services like Uniswap, Synthetix, CoinGecko, Decentraland, and much more. They're already serving billions of queries monthly and have a ton of official and community subgraphs on the Graph Explorer as well. The Graph protocol has already been deployed on the Ethereum mainnet, but this only supports Ethereum blockchain data. They also have a hosted service that supports indexing data from other compatible chains and also layer two solutions too. So what are some upcoming milestones? Because they've already launched their protocol on December 17th, 2020, so right now they're really focused on making sure that it runs smoothly. They also want to allow subgraphs to process data from other subgraphs so they can work together and support other blockchains besides just Ethereum, improve and enhance their proof of indexing concept, improve protocol modeling and simulation, especially for their monetary policy for GRT. And what about their team, right? Their CEO, Yanif Tal, is a software engineer and serial entrepreneur. They have a growing team from around Silicon Valley. They're backed by Coinbase Ventures and other big VC firms in this space. And to be honest, they're not rockstar team members like Polkadot or Cardano, but they're still very legit in my book and solid and impressive progress so far. So what are my final thoughts? I like this project a lot. They're solving a real and unique problem, even though it's not as sexy as some of the other DeFi projects you may have seen. They are getting major adoption so far from big dApps and also seeing major community participation for subgraphs. What I want to see is increased usage and integration. Most importantly, 
and I think that the price of GRT will likely appreciate as well during this bull market. They are already listed on big exchanges like Coinbase, so that's really impressive. And I'll definitely be following along with this project. What do you think though? Let me know down in the comments below if you like GRT, if you're invested. Let me know what other project you want me to deep dive into next. I'm going to be covering Celsius Network and other juicy topics that you guys have asked for before. So I'm Kevin from Bitcoin for Beginners. I hope you have an amazing rest of your day and I'll catch y'all next time. Yeah.